Almost every house has electricity by now, and we all use electricity, but we don't know where it comes from. We pay the electricity once a month, and sometimes when it's a little high, we cuss them out. The electricity we use either comes from water, natural gas, air, solar, and in the end, it might have came from nuclear energy. And usually, the place that's producing the electricity is very far from us. There is a lot of statistics for different places in the world. Like for example, when you turn on your washing machines in the state of California, depending on the hour you're using it, the electricity comes from the state of California itself or it comes from Texas. The water system is very simple in the world. They just build water pressure and it goes through the line. Whenever water is used by somebody, depending on the pressure that's behind it, that could be a dam or a pump, the water is immediately replaced. And the water doesn't have to be the same amount as the demand. So you could have much more extra. You could have a giant dam connected to a water pipe and a little bit of it is used. And it doesn't cause any problems, but electricity is different. When you want to, for example, turn on your air conditioning, the electricity has to be sent to you on the spot. And that means there is no electricity stored for you just to turn on the AC. So electricity comes from the source to your house to turn on your air conditioning. The electric grid has to be extremely powerful and exact, and it cannot do too much power or very little power. If there's something lacking in the system, it will cause an outage. In the US, the power grid usage is highest in January and July. Since January is middle of the winter, there is a lot of heaters being turned on. And since July is in the middle of summer, there are a lot of people using air conditioning. Predicting monthly usages between people is easy, but predicting the hourly is difficult, and that makes the situation extremely complicated. The normal hours is very common. Like for example, in 7 a.m. usage goes very high because in different parts of the world, they turn on their heater, and sometimes a lot of people turn on their coffee maker. At 2 p.m., the electricity usage goes up once again. Then it lowers, and whenever the sun goes down, the electricity surges once again. At this hour, not only is everybody turning their lights on, but a lot of people are off work and they turn on their TV to watch something or they even turn on their computer to do something. This is the highest usage during any hour and the electric grid knows this, so they are ready to provide the electricity. The most stable type of electricity is nuclear power. So the electricity that's produced is very equal throughout the year. But different types like dams and natural gas, it could go way up and down. It's good to know most of the electricity that's used in the US comes from coal. Up next is natural gas, and then we also have nuclear energy. There are different power options as well, like dam, wind turbines, and some places, solar panels. But most of the power comes from the three options we told you earlier. In the US, they have organized this usage very well, and these three provide all the electricity that's needed usually. The coal and nuclear power plants are very stable in giving electricity, but natural gas places are always ready to be told to turn on. And if there's a shortage of electricity anywhere, they can immediately turn on the engines. The good thing about a gas turbine engine is that it's immediately ready to start and produce electricity. So how is natural gas turned into electricity? A natural gas gas turbine engine is basically a jet engine form. And with the fuel that it gets, which is natural gas, with the least amount of pollution, it produces electricity by spinning. These gas turbines are so advanced that even the heat of the exhaust is used to make electricity. So all these things we told you that are so organized, who does it? How is it set up? Something called a computer does all this, but not the computer you and I use. It's a supercomputer. This room is called the dispatching. Any area in the country has its own dispatching, and the dispatching controls how much electricity goes where and how much electricity is needed. 
if there is any issues with what they're doing, the operators are right there to fix it. Like for example, a semi truck hits a light post and a certain area completely loses electricity. This patching will immediately see this problem on the screen and they will either send guys out there or fix it on the spot somehow. A dispatching like this has about 8 workers per shift. This dispatching controls 65 million people's electricity in the east coast of the United States. The computer you're seeing is making sure everything is working properly and there is no empty spots or a place missing electricity. These 8 people that work in this area are considered engineers themselves and their problem solving skills are very high. Any issues that is found in their area, they will either fix it on the spot or they will tell other people or a technician to go fix it. These are the people that control, like for example 6pm, how much electricity is needed for the state of Colorado. This patching basically has to keep this graph stable. The supply and demand has to be equal throughout and there can't be one lower than the other. If it is, it will cause an outage. The employees that work at a facility like this, every day is pretty much different. One day we have two problems, another day we have a thousand problems. And that is why they have to be extremely experienced and be ready for anything. The technicians that work in this room have a very stressful job because they're always on their toes to see if anything is wrong and if it is, they have to immediately fix it so they're always on the phone talking to other people. It's kind of like the control tower at an airport and they have to watch out for every plane in that vicinity or they will crash into each other. But why can't we store electricity and use it whenever we need it? The only place you can store energy is a battery. And the most modern battery is a lithium ion. These batteries are extremely expensive and heavy. And if you want to store electricity for like a city, you will need a giant building filled with these batteries. So storing electricity is not worth it whatsoever. So the production has to be same as the usage. Let's learn a little bit more about electricity. Can you use this type of power at your house? The house will explode. And I'm not even joking. This high power line you're seeing is about 100,000 to 300,000 volts. There are high power lines that have even more electricity flowing through them. Like these ones have about 700,000 volts flowing through them. So how are these electricities used throughout the cities? If we use it in our home, it will catch on fire. To make these high power line electricities usable in a household, you need something that is called a transformer. A transformer could be a whole station in a city or it could be a box put on a lamp post and it's connected to a high power line that dumbs down the electricity. It lowers the voltage and now you could use it in your 220 or 110 household. When you look at a high power line, how can you find out how many volts are flowing through this line? To understand the power of it, you have to look at the insulator. These insulators are usually ceramic discs and it doesn't allow the electricity to connect to the post itself. And you could tell that it's not connected by looking at this. So how can we understand the voltage? Each of these discs can withstand 15,000 volts. And that means if there is 9 discs in an insulator, you have about 135,000 volts flowing through it. When you pass by these high power lines, they have an extremely loud noise. Take a listen. The higher the voltage, the louder the sound is gonna be. So why does it make a sound? When electricity is flowing through a piece of wire, it loses a little bit of power and it loses and keeps moving forward and the power loss creates that noise. You might say when it gets to the other side of the country it pretty much lost the electricity but it's not like that. The power loss is not that fast. 90% of the speed of light and that's about 270,000 kilometers per second. So it goes around the earth a few times a second. Another interesting thing you should know is that they tell you not to stand under these high power lines because it's not good for your health. They say this, but there is no proof that these high power lines are actually bad for a person's health. 
and there is nothing that proves a living thing or a person has suffered anything because of these high power lines.